first century A.D., Samaria was this region of Palestine between Galilee and Judea. Galilee was to the north of Samaria, and Judea was to the south. Those who lived there included Jews, and over time they intermarried with Gentiles. A Gentile is a person of a non-Jewish nation or of non-Jewish faith. Foreign gods were worshipped by Gentiles. And as a result, there was quite a bit of hatred between Jews and Samaritans. Jews and Samaritans did not associate with one another. And when a Jew traveled between Galilee and Judea, he would usually go out of his way a greater distance and would cross over the Jordan River on the east bank so to avoid going through Samaria. Jesus, however, felt no animosity towards Samaritans. And he traveled through Samaria. And if you remember, there was another time that Jesus went through Samaria. And that's when he talked with the woman at the well. Leprosy is a condition that has a whitish scaliness on the skin. It's recognized by either swelling or an eruption or some kind of spot. In Leviticus chapters 13 and 14, priests are given very specific instructions on how to deal with leprosy amongst their people. And according to Le Leviticus, priests were to examine the person who had leprosy and then determine if the spot was, was spreading. He had to determine if it was deep or superficial and if their hair was discolored. He also looked to see if there were raw spots and raw flesh on the skin. And if there was, and if there were places that were spreading, that person was declared unclean. Leprosy could also be in a person's beard or up in their hair. And it would cause quite a bit of itching. If you had leprosy, you had to wear torn clothes. You had to cover your mouth. And when you were in the presence of others, you had to cry, unclean, and let everybody around you know not to get near you. They were quarantined from everyone else and had very little interaction with the people in the community. Leprosy can be cured, and Leviticus 14 goes into detail for the cleansing of those who have leprosy. Today it's hard to identify modern day skin diseases with biblical leprosy. We don't know the exact nature of what biblical leprosy was. And the modern types of skin diseases we have today aren't easily identified. And so leprosy was a dreaded disease that brought with it anguish and despair and isolation. And as we see in verse 13, these ten men stood away from Jesus and announced that they were unclean. They pleaded with him to have mercy on them. And let's see what he did. In verse 14 we read, When he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed. Here we see that Jesus doesn't heal the ten lepers immediately. Instead, he sends them to the priest. So they listened to Jesus, headed off to the priest, and while they were on their way, Jesus healed them. He sent them to the priest so they could be declared clean and they could reenter society and be a part of the community. So what did those ten lepers do after they were healed? Verse 15 and 16. One of them, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. When I was a youth minister in Louisville, I would take my high school youth on Kentucky Changers projects. Kentucky Changers is a, sponsored by the uh, Kentucky Baptist Men on Mission uh, Department of the Kentucky Baptist Convention. 
It is where youth go to work, and they do repairs on low-income housing and do it for these families. It gives that youth an opportunity to live out their faith and see that missions is a lifestyle. The types of repair that they do include tearing off and replacing shingles, uh, doing vinyl siding, paintings outside of homes, building wheelchair ramps, and any kinds of other repairs that are needed. All of these materials are provided by the local city governments. The homeowner doesn't pay for anything. And the labor is furnished by the youth. The youth pay to go to work for a week. The youth work for eight hours during the day. A lot of times these projects are in the middle of July when it's just as hot as it can be in this area. They come in after working eight hours. They have a chance to get cleaned up and relax, eat some dinner, and then have a worship service. And so after the worship service would be a time for the youth to get together with their church group because during the day they are out with other kids from across the state doing this work and so we're not all together. They come back and work and then we come together and share. And so every evening my youth would, would gather and we would share stories about the day. And almost every night they would say something about the homeowner. And many of the homeowners would engage in conversations with them during the day. Uh, others would stay inside their homes and not come out at all. At the end of the week, many of the homeowners were genuinely grateful for the help and work that had been done to their homes, and they would thank the kids for the work and for that hard work that had been provided for them. They were very thankful for the help they had received. Then there were other homeowners who could have cared less that their homes had even been fixed. They didn't care about the work that had been done for them free of charge. We see that all ten of these lepers were healed while they were on the way to see the priest. But only one returned to give thanks. And that man was a Samaritan. We don't know for sure, but we can kind of assume that the other nine may have been Jews. They may not have. It may have been other Samaritans. But it was only one who returned. And we see that it is possible to receive God's great gifts with an ungrateful spirit, just like nine of these lepers did. This is the way some of the homeowners responded with Kentucky's Changers projects. God doesn't demand us to thank Him, but He likes it when we do. This leper who was healed didn't have to come back and thank Jesus. After all, he was a Samaritan, and Samaritans and Jews didn't associate with one another. But in this, we see that God's grace is for everyone. It's not selective. In verse 17, we see Jesus. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Was no one found to return and give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, Rise and go. Your faith has made you well. What about us? How do we respond when God blesses us? Are we quick to return thanks? Or do we just go on our merry way? One day there were two old friends who bumped into each other on the street. One man looked very sad and discouraged, almost on the verge of tears. His friend asked, My friend, what has the world done to you? 